So my name is Misty Rice. I'm the executive director um, for Magna International. We are a, mobi a mobility technology company which supplies to the automotive industry. And in my role, I serve as Magna's voice with global policymakers, government officials, industry organizations, community leaders, promoting the mission and, and business objectives and strategic goals of Magna. So for me, authentic le leadership and what it means to me is that um, I revert back to, in my career, those leaders that, um, that, that basically in two ways those that I really have loved and had great experiences with, and then I would like to emulate. And then sometimes I say that the, the best experiences that I've had in my career are some of the not so great leaders, right? And I think I've learned more from them about what is a kind of leadership leader that I don't want to be. And, and so that has helped me throughout my career. You know, I, I, you and I were talking and I have four young children and I try to read to them at night and my six-year-old daughter Avery her favorite book is about a little girl who who's a superhero and how she uses her superpower and on the last page of the book it asks a question of her and we do this regularly what is your superpower and my daughter always said to me mama my superpower is facing and overcoming my fears and the first time she said that to me I was just blown away because um you know, he, I was just in awe because here my six-year-old daughter has already learned it's not the absence of fear, but it's the courage that's required to, to triumph over that fear. And so, you know, I try to, those are the two things in my life that I really do try as, a, as I go about leading my team throughout, um, throughout Magna. What I would offer for women that would want to do what I do is, first of all, what I say to those that I mentor is that I'm so lucky in my job is that I also uh, love politics. So I, I recognize that not everybody's as fortunate as I am, but knowing what you love and what you, what you would like to do would make you fulfilled and, product, and productive. I say, you, we hear this all the time, but you've got you to follow your dream. It leads to a higher level of success. And in, and in order to determine what you would like to do, you just gotta ask yourself about what your dreams and your goals and your strengths are. And it goes back to knowing in, in my view about what knowing what your superpower is. So in the case of government affairs, um, I started very young in volunteering in campaigns for, and volunteering uh, to work for pe with people and volunteering for those that I, I believed would make good leaders. So I knocked doors with them. I stuffed, you know, back in the day, stuffed envelopes and did those kinds of things and made telephone calls. And that leads you into, you know, introducing yourselves into, into the realm of government affairs. And, and in my case, I worked on a lot of campaigns and then I worked for state government. And from there, I went to, to work for a nonprofit and then now worked for some of the largest Fortune 500 companies in the US. So, you know, for me, my superpower, I always joke around with my kids is that I'm a problem solver. I'm a decider. You know, I decided what I wanted to do very early on. I graduated from high school when I was 16 years old. I graduated from college whenever in three years, and then I gra eventually graduated from law school. So again, I, I knew I liked politics and, and started, started out in the path that I just described, volunteering in campaigns, eventually managing them and winning them and then became a full-time lobbyist. So the number one thing that will help further women's economic recovery, in my view, is childcare. You know, childcare demands at home skyrocketed during the pandemic, but men and women did not split that burden equally. And as we know, globally, women took on additional 173 additional hours of unpaid uh, childcare child care last, last year alone. So when the pandemic created this child, you know, we already had issues in child care, but I, it certainly exacerbated them. And mothers became the default solution. And until, it, you know, as, as we've seen, as life has started to reopen to some extent, there still continue to be this disruption, particularly for mothers with young children that cannot be yet vaccinated. 
until um, we solve this solution, I think we're going to continue to see this situation be ex exacerbated and affect women more. Uh, and it's one of one of the things that Governor Whitmer and the, the Michigan TriShare Child Care Program hopefully is a start here in Michigan to eat, to try and, and um, you know, bring some bring some relief to working moms in the state of Michigan. So that but child care is is definitely one of the things that we need to see continue to be addressed in a in a, in a global in a, in a U.S. systemic way.